Good morning, Chris the Contemplative here, and uh, this is a trailer for my show right off the gate in case you're wondering what all this art's about. This show is called Are You Spiritual? And that's a question that all of us should ask. Are we spiritual? It's thrown around a lot like PB&J, but like I've been doing for the past few episodes, I have been trying to demolish some assumptions we've made about religion, about modern thinking, or if we've questioned it at all, and what we term to be, what we deem to be spiritual. For the first part of the series, I essentially broke it down from societal and mass psychology level. I'm trying to show that much of what we think is higher level thinking is actually our base level impulses or erroneous thinking from our formation and our culture. And really, as the Buddha, even though I'm not a Buddhist, put it, or as other Indian thinkers have put it, we're really stuck in what they call the Asura path, right? The path of the animal kingdom. And you just got to wonder when you're really honest with yourself, which I have to be and we all have to be at some point in our lives, how much of our decisions is ruled by base impulses like the animal kingdom? How much of it is ruled by fear? How much of it is ruled by pleasure? Instead of truth, instead of authentic love, which is, and sacrifice, which is what to me makes my eyebrow raise and think, hmm, that's a holy person. They're going against their self, they're beyond themselves, some, or something, more importantly, something beyond themselves is transforming them. That's the question we have to ask. And this episode will take us to the next level. If you've been watching, I hope, if you haven't been watching, I hope that you can catch up and not get triggered. Because from here on out, you may get triggered. This is the stuff that challenges my standards, my personal understanding. This is where I'm going to have to really be humble here because this is stuff that I struggle with. So you're, you're not in it alone. I'm not some kind of Zarathustra black belt guru. <laughs> I'm not a poobah who will act like he knows everything because I don't. And this coming episode will be about Something that I know hovers over my head and everyone's head when we talk about God, which is a fear of hell. Uh, and interestingly enough, people that fear hell often become very hellish. Uh, what do I mean by this? Well, in the thumbnail, you see satanic Christians. And you have this phenomena of many people within the left who support things like abortion, who support very self-gratifying, self-indulgent things and swear that they're Christian. Uh, that's very pagan and not very Christian at all, but they consider themselves it. And I try to cover why this happens in some of these episodes, but I'm talking about the heart of the matter, the psyche of these people. Um, where does this come from? Many of them, or most of them, are baptized Christians. It's like, you know, is the Lord going to revoke any passports? It's by God's mercy that they are still allowed to carry on, I would think. And then, on the other hand, you even have worse things like narcissism on the rise, which, I mean, you can't get more demonic than worshiping yourself. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, what do you mean by satanic Christians? I mean, aren't these just um, sinners? Isn't this sin? Aren't you being judgmental? Well, I'm trying not to be, but the truth of the matter is, if you look at the tenets of Satanism and the tenets of Luciferianism, which is coming out and starting to throw off its wig, yes, the Luciferian occult is growing. Uh, it's all about worshiping self and base impulses. And, of course, we all are a little bit satanic. That's I understand that. We're all sinners. We're all from Adam and Eve. We all have these impulses, and and I'm not saying that I'm completely pure, right? We've all tapped into that in one way or another. But the ideology of the left is satanic. There is no way to put it other than that. 
And there's some Satanists that'll tell you that. I mean, you know, sometimes the dark side tells you the truth. If you really look at it, they kind of let it slip a little bit. But how did this happen? Well, like I've been saying, poor formation is a big thing to blame. Not much depth in the way people think. However, in terms of the inner person and in terms of some of the craziness that we have within ourselves, within the modern mind, within the modern Western mind, one of the issues is that we have a poor understanding of heaven and hell based off of these two stereotypes here. On the left, you see Zeus, excuse me, I waved my hand the wrong way. He exemplifies how people see God the Father. Power, might, fear, you'll get thrown in eternal jail. <laughs> you know, that's the way people view this. And that is often stereotyped to be the rigid conservative, the really derpy kind of grumpy, angry person, usually a man who wants to stay in the past and wants to create morality through fear. On the right of me, you have Aphrodite, which is the stereotypical understanding of a liberal person, right? Someone who is in the emotional side of things, who wants to feel alive at all costs sometimes. And they're very uninterested or they hate Zeus. They hate the controlling father. And the father hates this libertine <laughs> feminine spirit, right? And they're always clashing together. Well, both of these are wrong. And my point is we have to transcend both of these levels of thinking because the entirety of the gospel challenges both of these honestly rather more psychological and even psychosexual ways of looking at what right and wrong is and and whatever um, more than an actual authentic spirituality so when it comes to the zeus image of what god is uh we look at the scripture and the new testament and we clearly see that there's more to god than that that god is love uh the song of songs right if you know the context of that you're like well how can zeus be like this you know some romantic lover and loving the soul. Of course, you have the passion of Jesus Christ and his teachings. So those that are trying to be traditional and, and rigid, um, that take it too far and only focus on the fear aspect, you know, you can say they're the Pharisees, right? They're, they're that archetype. Uh, of course, but in the inner person, which is my more, what my, my interest lies in the inner person, um, their inner person shows the need that that they, the need for what Aphrodite is kind of giving them, which is that very interesting. Like a, a person who is stuck in this mindset usually struggles with addictions and sin like everyone else. They're usually very angry, often because they themselves don't have hope. So that just increases their frustration even more for the left. Uh, because they want them to kind of join them. And maybe if we have a societally conservative enough movement, we can fix what's inside. Good luck with that, right? However, on the opposite, the inner person of Aphrodite also wants what Zeus has because a lot of their lives are very messy broken relationships, uh, addictions, they get completely burnt out. They have their own hellish existence. And then you see them do these wacky things where they want to pick up religions that have hell in them. Newsflash, Christianity isn't the only religion with eternal consequences. Uh, now, they don't read enough books to understand that the Buddhist statue or the shamanistic whatever the dream catcher that they have are connected to religions that have understandings of right and wrong to some degree and some pretty painful experiences. 
But isn't that kind of ironic that they are still needing order in their lives? So this is the issue, this hypocrisy between, between these two stereotypes. And that is saying, putting it lightly because those stereotypes are nothing compared to some of the extremes we're seeing today. So we need a deeper understanding of a God that goes beyond our little comforts, but still gives us hope, but still gives us greater meaning than both of these morons, <laughs> these two ridiculous Greek gods uh, that you read in ancient Greek mythology and like, how could people pray to these kinds of beings? Well, they were afraid of them. And they also kind of saw them as like subconscious emanations of life. There's a little bit of pantheism, polytheism, but I'm not going to get into that. But my question to you is, how do you see heaven and hell? And one of the things I see is that within the secular way of how we kind of, without thinking, explain heaven and hell, we can see a little bit more truth. Like when someone goes on a vacation to an island, they say it's paradise. You know, Hawaii, go off to a paradise vacation. Or we see in a Disney fairy tale, a lot of people like to say that's kind of had a heavenly way of, a heavenly way of existence. To, if only we could be in a fairy tale. And then of course, in terms of saying, oh, I, I'm in hell when someone's having a bad day, I'm in hell. You know, they're depressed or they're struggling with something. So we do have that innate understanding. But the reason why we have that is because heaven and hell, paradise and the void is connected to beauty. It's connected to what on the inside makes us feel at peace or makes us feel chaos. So that's where I have this picture, the tree of life here. Um, I'm getting into photography because I often see some pretty amazing things in the morning. I'm not a professional, but I'm, I just feel the need to take pictures. So I call this one, the tree of life, uh, it's a tree in my backyard being lit up by the sun. I mean, you could say it's looks kind of like a burning bush. I know Elizabeth, one of her, um, group members, she loves that imagery. And for me, this helps us see the truth. It shows us a mixture of light and darkness, of hope and beauty, as well as that very cold morning and thoughts that can take you into death, but ultimately gives you a hopeful understanding. I think this is a window into the realm of God. And I'm asking you this question. How does the tree speak to you? Now, we're going to continue this discussion on my broadcast, which is Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern. I'm changing up the time. And I'd like you to bring these questions to the show. Please introspect. Please have some humility and go against yourself. Try to ask questions about your questions and think about what I said. And if you agree or not agree, please try to uh, dig deep and let's demolish these assumptions together and have a new understanding of God and Jesus Christ. Take care, everyone, and God bless.